we're having a very, we're starting to show on a very interesting, it's a very interesting conversation about the pressures that are being mounted on the European government to return our artifacts. I'll just go very quickly into the details. Efforts by the Edo State Governor, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, and the Benin monarch, uh, Omonoba Nedo Uku Akpobolo, to retrieve the facts stolen from the state in the colonial era, era yielding results as European governments have set modalities in place for either permanent or temporary return of the artworks. The Oba of Benin, um, his campaign for the return of the prize heritage objects has raged for decades, with Nigerian authorities mounting pressure on the European government and museums to return them, while the Europeans argue that holding back the work was best for the preservation of the artifacts, as there were, there were no structures in Africa to properly hold them. However, while presenting the 2019 budget proposal on Monday before a session of the House of Assembly, Governor, Governor Baseki um, stressed his intention to make Benin the cultural capital of West Africa with the planned return of the artifacts and proposed 500 million for the construction of the Benin Royal Museum, a facility to be constructed in collaboration with the Obas Palace and the Benin Dialogue Group. First of all, what jumps at you when you hear reports like this? Well, first of all, I, I would naturally say that I am disappointed that we got to the point where it's more like Nigerian government is begging the Europeans to return what they actually stole from us, if we have to be truthful. They were taken and, you know, forcefully at that. For those of us who have gone through history, heard about the Bini Kingdom, how wonderful and how well structured that kingdom was at that time, and then, you know, all that happened, happened. And then artifacts were taken away. And it's, Nigeria is not the first nation who has had issues with the Europeans taking, you know, their things away from them. There are other countries in Africa, countries like Zambia and Namibia, asking them, you know what, these things are what has, you know, we have history, culture from these things. Return them to us. And the bronze in Benin is a known these are known, you know, artifacts that even people come, travel from all over the world to European nations where they have been kept to actually look at them. And I'm like, you have made so much money from this over time. These well, let's, artifacts let's have been it. there for over a hundred years. Let's ask a key question, though. Yeah. Let's ask a key question. As much as I want to say, yes, we should have our artifacts back. Are we really prepared to manage them properly? We haven't even success successfully managed some of our statues. Thankfully, art is now starting to gain ground. On no account would I ever endorse the fact that our artworks are being held, you know, by other countries and that they're not being returned to us. We just need to ensure that we clean, we clean our house. We have our acts together. I remember Ali Baba put up something similar like this on his, post, on his page on Instagram a while ago, you know, speaking about the fact that we have bad management processes. We need to learn how to put our own house together. We found that not just with our artifacts, even with our money that is being stolen and um, embezzled True. and taken to other countries, yeah. sometimes you hear scenarios of them saying, oh, we don't want to return it yet because we know that if we return it, it will be relaundered or, you know, it will go into corruption, which unfortunately is the truth in most cases. So what do we need to do? We need to clean our house. We need to ensure that, you know, we have our act together in the little things. Let's start cherishing our culture and our tradition. And how do we do that? Reincorporating history into our subjects, into our curriculums. Lots of young people... Do not, they don't do history in schools anymore. We need to start teaching peop, young people about our kingdoms, about our government, about the great leaders that we've had, you know, the Queen Aminas, and all the people who have basically, who form a part of our history. Let us first start to value our history. You can't teach someone how to value you if you do not value yourself. The value you place on yourself is the value that somebody else will place on you. So we as a people need to learn to put value on our art, on our history, on our culture, on our tradition. Sure. Only after we've learned to put that value on it, that is when we can teach other people how to put value on that. That being said, you know, I, I really would think it would be amazing for us to have our artwork back, have our museum set up, have people travel from all around the world to come and explore the rich cultural heritage of our people in Nigeria, not just because we do have a rich cultural heritage, but because it's also a financial avenue. Tourism is something we can explore. Yeah, it's, it's, several it's things something that, 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 you know, that can do us well, revenue-wise, actually. Yeah. You know, like, for example, I agree with what you're saying. If we look at Calabar today, I schooled in Unicol, and I can tell you by the time I was leaving school, or when I came into Calabar to study, what I heard, you know, during a certain democratic governor's time, it's not what I experienced in Calabar. And I wept because we had several beautiful places in Calabar that today 
key, they are key practically key shadows of themselves. Is the Obudu Cattle Ranch. When the Obudu Cattle Ranch started, everybody that wanted Ooh. to get married wanted to go and do their own honeymoon in Obudu. People would think, oh, instead of going out... The cable Obudu. rides don't work no more. In fact, the lights in Obudu right now... I remember okay. interviewing G-Mike. He had just finished doing a movie at Obudu. Yeah. And I asked him, oh, how is Obudu Cattle Ranch? And he said, oh... It's extremely cold, which is, you know, nice to go and get the feel. Yeah, the area is hilly, actually. However, the hotel he stayed in to shoot his film did not even have a generator. They didn't have a heater. He had to ensure that the producers went into town to make all that happen. And I'm wondering how did something that was such a big <laughs> part of our tourist attraction become a shadow of itself? These are the things we need to look at. We project towards 2019 as a people. We need to ensure that there are several areas of our, of our, of our nation that needs to be revived. Tourism, culture, and our tradition is one key one. And we we'll start by teaching our children our languages. Food for thought. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.